Today we're going to use the latest version of Macrium Reflect Free to clone all partitions of a hard drive to an M2 SSD, and I'll show you how to keep it bootable after the clone. In a previously published video, I did the same thing with an older version of Macrium Reflect Free, cloning a 1TB hard drive down to a 360GB SSD and successfully rebooting into the SSD. In this video, I'll go further in the process by completely wiping the hard drive after the clone, and I'll answer some common questions that were raised in the last video, including what to do when cloning to a larger SSD. Before we start, I do have a disclaimer. This video was created specifically with the Dell Inspiron 5570 in mind, so this procedure may not work for all computers. At a high level, you need to make sure that your PC or laptop has a way to change the boot sequence to the SSD drive. Later in the video, I'll be showing you how to completely erase the contents of the hard drive, which is always a risky operation. Make sure you back up any critical data, and you may even want to create a backup image of the entire disk. With that said, I'm starting with an out-of-the-box 5570 laptop in which I've already installed a brand new 360GB M2 SSD module. If you're interested, you can visit my previous tutorial that describes the process of installing the SSD. My intent is to use the SSD as my boot drive and to wipe clean the original 5400 RPM 1TB hard drive so I can use it as my secondary storage. When you're cloning from a larger drive to a smaller one, it's not possible to fit, say, 800 gigabytes of data on the 1 terabyte hard drive into a smaller space of 360 gigabytes. If this resembles your situation, you can always uninstall some programs or offload data like music and other media to an external hard drive. If you can reduce it down to, say, 300 gigabytes, the clone will work. Keep in mind that you may have other smaller partitions like system or recovery partitions that aren't shown on the screen. If we zoom into the drive, you'll see that the Dell Inspiron supplies five additional partitions out of the box, each with their own used space. You may see a different number of partitions depending on your computer. Since they're so small relative to the size of the main OS partition, you can copy them over without worrying too much about how much space they take. When Macrium Reflect actually performs the clone, it'll copy the data, along with the mini partitions, over to the destination SSD. When you go from a smaller drive to a larger one, however, everything will fit fine no matter how much space is used on the hard drive. But if you just accept the defaults while cloning, you'll end up with a partition that's the same size as your old one, wasting a lot of unused space. However, there is a way to manually expand it, which I'll demonstrate later on. Before we install Macrium Reflect, let's take a look at our newly installed SSD in Windows. I'll right-click the Start button and select Disk Management. Since the SSD hasn't been initialized, it'll pop up a dialog box prompting you to choose a partition style, which you can skip for now since Macrium Reflect will take care of that for us during the clone on the fly. Our goal is to clone disk 0, which is our slow 5400 RPM 1TB hard drive, to disk 1, which is our fast 360GB SSD. Let's exit the Disk Management tool and launch the installed web browser. I'll then search for Macrium Reflect Free. And after clicking on the first result that's returned, make sure you download the free version for home use, not the trial version. The free version is truly free, while the trial version has a 30-day limitation. After clicking Home Use, it'll prompt you for your email address, which is entirely optional, after which you'll want to click Continue. Let's close the Thank You screen, and I'll hit Run to start the program immediately after it downloads. When it starts up, you'll see that this is a small stub program that downloads a much larger setup file. Using the defaults, I'll hit the Download button, while it downloads, you may have noticed that the website refers to the same version 7 of Macroom Reflect Free as my previous video. However, this is a new build in which they've made quite a few changes since the last time we downloaded it. Now that it's finished downloading, the main installer will start. Let's click Next, which launches the setup wizard. Hit Next again, and after you accept the license agreement and move to the next screen, select the Home License. The following step will prompt you to register the software, where you can enter your email address if you wish, or you can uncheck the registration box and hit the Next button. Here, we'll accept the defaults for the install location and the desktop shortcut, click Next, and finally hit Install to start the actual installation of the program. 
Once the installation is complete, we can click Finish to close out the setup wizard. When the program launches, you'll see the slow 1TB drive that comes with the laptop, labeled Disk 1, divided into six different partitions. The plan, of course, is to clone all six partitions in the correct order to the SSD, which is labeled Disk 2. Remember that these were labeled Disks 0 and 1 in the Disk Management tool earlier, so don't get confused about the numbering. Macrium Reflect simply labels them 1 and 2 instead. Before we start, though, you'll need to create a rescue disk by selecting Other Tasks from the menu, then Create Rescue Media. Later in this video, I'll use this disk to restore the Windows boot partition. Just to be clear, this isn't a backup of any of your data. This is just a way to boot to a Windows recovery version of Macrium Reflect. I recommend a CD or DVD if possible, or if you insert a flash drive, you'll be presented with an option to create it there. Since I still have a few blank CDs left over from the 1990s, I'll use a CD to create my rescue disk. Once I hit the Build button, it'll take some time, so I'll take a break to make some coffee, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're done. In case you're wondering about the size of the rescue disk contents, I'll launch File Explorer and look at the properties of the CD, which indicates around 533 megabytes of data. If you're using a USB flash drive, a 1 gigabyte capacity will be more than enough for a rescue disk. Regardless of the medium you use, please test it to make sure you can boot to it, because it will be required later in the video. So let's start the cloning process. To do so, we'll click Clone This Disk. This top bar, once again, is labeled Disk 1, which represents the 1 terabyte hard drive. The bottom section is where we'll select the destination, which is the new SSD, labeled Disk 2. You should see a blank gray box, since it's an empty, unallocated disk. What you'll want to do next is to drag and drop these boxes representing each partition from the source to the destination. Keep in mind that these boxes aren't to scale. For example, this third box is where Windows resides, and its size is a whopping 918 gigabytes, while the box right next to it is only 461 megabytes, or less than 1 gigabyte. In fact, all the partitions other than the Windows partition are relatively tiny, ranging from 461 megabytes to the 11 gigabyte range. Let's start dropping partitions to the bottom. When we get to the third one, you can see we have a problem. It's so large that it takes all the space of the 360 gigabyte SSD. Macrium is able to truncate the partition down to 334.59 gigabytes to make it fit onto the SSD, but then we won't be able to fit the fourth, fifth, and sixth partitions. So let's remove the third box by clicking Undo, and drag the fourth, fifth, and sixth boxes instead. What remains is 321.89 gigabytes to fill, which we'll do now with the Windows partition. You can see that Macrium Reflect has shrunk the partition from 918.04 gigabytes down to 321.89, using up all the space on the SSD. What I'd like to do is place the partitions in their original order of 1 through 6 instead of 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 3, as shown here. This is because the partition number may be important for some recovery environments. Unfortunately, I haven't found this to be the case with Dell's Support Assist, but I'll show you a solution for restoring from the recovery partition in a future video, even when Support Assist can't detect it. At any rate, the easiest way to keep the original order is to write this number down, the size of the truncated Windows partition. I'll then remove this partition with the Undo button, as well as partitions 6, 5, and 4. Since we have partitions 1 and 2 in the correct order, I'll simply drag and drop the third one down again, and then click Cloned Partition Properties. This is where you can manually change the size of the partition on the clone drive. In the Partition Size box, let's type in the number that we wrote down earlier, 321.89, and click OK. We can now drag down 4, 5, and 6, which are guaranteed to fit the SSD perfectly. But what if you're going from a smaller disk to a larger one? For instance, let's assume you're going from 1 terabyte to 2 terabytes. You'll want to follow the same procedure, dragging down 1, 2, skipping the Windows partition, and dropping 4, 5, 6, and then 3. 
Notice that the last partition doesn't expand to fit, even though we saw that it'll shrink to fit. What you'll need to do is click the Cloned Partition Properties link, and then hit the Maximum Size button, and change the units to gigabytes, which will give you a number in the partition size box, 1849.551. Write this number down, and I'll go ahead and close this out, and using the Undo button, remove partitions 3, 6, 5, and 4, and then resume our partition sequence with number 3. Click Clone Partition Properties again, make sure your units are correct, and enter the number we discovered earlier, 1849.551, and hit OK. Once again, drop the boxes in order, and we're guaranteed to fit within the space of the SSD. OK, so that was going to a larger SSD. Let's get back to our demonstration for going to a smaller SSD. After you have your partition set, you'll want to click the Next button. Here you can schedule the clone again in the future, but in our case, we're only doing this once, so I'll skip it by hitting Next. This takes us to the Summary screen, which lists every operation that'll be performed, and where we can click the Finish button. Finally, we'll choose the option to run the backup now, and uncheck the box to save or schedule the definition as an XML, since we're only doing this once. Once we click OK, the cloning process will start, which can take quite some time. I'll go ahead and take another break to brew a second cup of coffee. OK, we're back. The clone took approximately 45 minutes, but your mileage may vary. Opening up File Explorer, the C drive, which is the hard drive, has been cloned to F, which is the SSD. In fact, when I click on both drives, we can see that the folder structures are identical. I'll go ahead and close File Explorer, Macrium Reflect, and the browser, and finally hit the Start menu in order to reboot my machine so I can make some changes to the BIOS. As soon as you see the Dell splash screen, you'll want to hit the F2 key, which allows you to enter the BIOS setup screens. This is where we'll swap the hard drive and the SSD, such that the system boots to the SSD. Go ahead and hit Boot Sequence on the left-hand menu, where you'll discover an entry for the SSD that wasn't there before. You'll want to click on that entry, then hit the Up button to move it into first place above the hard drive. We can now apply the settings, where I'll save as Custom Settings, hit OK, and then Exit, which reboots the machine. You may or may not see a blue screen. If it does pop up, this will be the only time you see it. Simply continue, and after a while, you'll be taken directly to Windows. You should notice that it starts up much quicker since it's using Windows on the SSD. To prove that we're on the SSD, I'll launch File Explorer, where you can see that my C drive is now the 360GB SSD, while the E drive is my old 1TB hard drive. This is where my previous video about Macrium Reflect ended. I'm now going to complete the process and wipe out the hard drive so that I can use it as a fresh, empty drive for secondary storage. What you'll want to do is hit the Start button and type CMD. Right-click on the resulting Command Prompt link and choose Run as Administrator. You'll then need to type Disk Part to start Microsoft's Disk Partition Utility. To list all the disks in your system, Type List Disk, which shows you the hard drive, labeled Disk 0, and the SSD, labeled Disk 1. Since we want to wipe the hard drive, I'm going to type Select Disk 0, and if I List Disk again, I can confirm that Disk 0 is indeed selected by observing the asterisk next to it. I'll then wipe the disk by typing Clean. But be very careful using this command, because it'll erase your hard drive without prompting you for additional information. Make absolutely certain that you've selected the disk that represents your old original hard drive. On my computer, it's disk 0, but it may be different on yours. After you press Enter, Disk Part will completely wipe your hard disk, including all partitions on it. In fact, you'll notice in the background that the E drive disappears from File Explorer. To create a new partition on the hard disk, right-click on the Start menu and select Disk Management. It'll then prompt you to initialize the disk, where you can keep it as a GPT disk, which is the default, and click OK. At the bottom, you should see a box for disk 0 that indicates an unallocated disk. Right-click the box and select New Simple Volume, which launches the wizard. Hit Next. Specify how large you want the volume. I'll just keep it at the maximum size so I can have one large 1TB one partition. And click Next. We'll click Next again to keep the default letter assignment, 
And finally, I'll enter a name for the volume label. Let's call it Data and hit Next. We'll click Finish to complete the wizard, after which it'll create a brand new empty E drive as you can see when I click back on File Explorer. But we're not finished yet. There's one more step to take, and that is to boot to the rescue disk. If you've removed the CD that we created earlier, insert it back into its tray or insert the USB flash drive. I'll go ahead and close out all windows and get ready to restart the machine. Once you see the Dell logo, you'll want to hit the F12 key, which is the one-time boot menu. Using the down arrow key, choose your rescue disk, which in my case is the DVD drive. Press any key to boot to the CD, and since it takes a while to boot, I'll take a break and grab a third and final cup of coffee. OK, we're back. This is the Macrium Reflect Rescue Disk. It has most of the operations of the actual program, except you're running it in a Windows PE environment instead of Windows 10. What you'll want to do is click the Fix Windows Boot Problems option, after which you should see a dialog box with your SSD listed. Hit Next, and then click Finish. After it restores the boot configuration data, go ahead and restart your PC, which will boot to Windows on the SSD as it did before. Let's open File Explorer once again and confirm we have our SSD as our C drive and the empty hard drive as our E drive. Reboot multiple times to make sure you can boot to your SSD repeatedly and reliably. And make sure to keep your rescue disk in a handy place just in case you need it in the future. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.